Hi, thank you for joining us here today. I am so blessed to be with two with very special women. I've got Kathy Cronin and Kathy Richmond here today for our panel discussion. And hopefully you'll get a lot out of this topic. But before we start with that, we always like to open with prayer. So I invite you to join us as we do that now. Take a breath and turn within. And as we enter this space within, we open a channel to express and understand in new ways, at new levels, knowing that we are connected to the divine spark that energizes and creates all that is. Thank you, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, God. Amen. Okay, so today I am turning back to a book. We visited this book a couple of times. It is full of so many great ideas and perspectives, probably more perspectives. This is written by James A. Decker, and the book is called Magnificent Decision. And I know there's at least one copy in the library at Unity Church of El Cajon if you would like to read the book in its entirety. We take little pieces, but you get more out of it in its entirety. So I'm looking at the chapter Secret Ingredient, and I'm going to read a little bit about this, and then hopefully we'll have a great topic. A certain man, let's call him Frank Adams, worked for many years, happily and successfully, as a chemist in a large plant. Then, due to changing local conditions, the firm's business began to decline, and eventually the owners were fo forced to shut down. Frank Adams was out of a job, and his former employers owed him more than a thousand dollars in back pay. He had a wife and two children to support. He was worried and upset. So he went to a lawyer friend and asked him what steps he should take. After hearing Frank's story, the lawyer, who was wise in the interpretation of God's law as well as civil law, said to him, Mr. Adams, the best thing you can do is leave this whole affair in God's hands. Can you imagine a lawyer saying that? That company might not be able to pay you what it owes you, even if it undertook, even if you undertook an expensive lawsuit. But you're a Christian man. Why not leave it to God? Amazed that a lawyer would advise against legal action, Frank Adams said some sharp things to his friend and left the office. At home, he talked the matter over with his wife, and to his surprise, his wife agreed with the attorney. So Frank returned to the law office the next day. Well, my wife and I have discussed this, he said, and I guess you're right at that. But isn't there something practical we can do? Yes, said the lawyer. You can add a secret ingredient to your thinking and planning. The secret ingredient of patience. Just put this whole affair in God's hands. Keep on praying about it and be patient. Not resigned or anything like that. Just patient. If you can do that, God will solve your problems for you. It took considerable friend faith for Frank Adams to follow the lawyer's advice, but with his wife's help, he was able to do so. A week later, he was back in the lawyer's office, smiling to give this report. I took your advice. My wife and I prayed, and we learned what patience really is. Almost as soon as we learned that, within three days, I received a letter from a friend in another state who told me about a better position with a better salary. I called to ask about the job and the company officials were so eager to hire a chemist with my experience that they offered to pay all of my moving expenses. 
Well, the book goes on from there, but that's the topic, patience and how it's a secret ingredient. And for me, I really loved that they said not to just be put out and wait, but be patient and know that God is working in this situation. I know each and every one of us have so many different stories about how this has worked out for us on so many different levels. And I will real quick talk about a time when it worked for me. I've told this story before, um, so you may have heard it, but I think it really fits here. I was early in recovery and working at the 24-hour prayer line. It was 24 hours at the time over at Unity of San Diego. And I put myself through college while I was working in this job. And I had kind of a covenant with God that once I graduated, I would find the right job easily and quickly and without a lot of rejection. I do not enjoy a lot of rejection. So I did my part and I put out applications and I had a great resume. I sent it to everybody and I didn't get a job and I didn't get a job. So I prayed about it and prayed about it. And the answer I got was that before I could get another job, I had to leave the job that I had. Wow, that was a little bit scary. But I put in my two-week notice, trusting that I would get a job. And Friday, I left the prayer ministry. And Monday, I started work as a full-time counselor in a residential treatment facility. It was amazing. And for me, that took the secret ingredient. So I wanted to share that. Thank you for letting me present my topic. And what do you think? Does, does that resonate with either of you? Well, yes. And especially since she's told the story about the lawyer. So that brought up something for me because I got out of high school and had my little resume that I had made in my class and, and was told you need to get a job like right away. And I wanted to be a secretary, a legal secretary. And I found, I went out and went knocking on some doors in La Mesa. I only had, uh, uh, I had my dad's car, but I only had it for a couple of hours and uh, went to this insurance company. And he said, well, I don't have any openings. He's, but I think the lawyer down the street, he said, I think his receptions just left. And I'm like, lawyer, really? Legal. Well, that's what I want. So I went down there. And sure enough, this attorney who ended up becoming a wonderful judge later in life, but um, he's had me come in and he said, you know, sit down and show me your resume. And I did. And he said, listen, looked it over and everything. He says, when can you start? I said, well, I have to take my dad's car home and have a little bit of lunch. Be back at one o'clock. You're hired. So that was my first experience working in the law field. And I had another job later on in life where the, it was a defense firm. So in other words, they worked for the insurance company. So you get in a car accident, you hire a lawyer, your plaintiff lawyer, and your defense lawyer works for the insurance company to see whether they're going to pay anything. So the, the attorney that I worked for was just, he was the sweetest guy. And I loved, and I loved the people in there, but I didn't feel like, I, I didn't feel like I was doing I wanted to be fighting for the person who was hurt. So I saw another ad for another job and I went and I took that job. Well, it was the worst job ever. This guy, I was by myself in the office all day. There was nobody else there. And he was just gruff and mean and, you know, um, and so I was having lunch with one of the girls from the other law firm. And I told her, I said, oh man, this guy, I don't know what I did. So my, my the lawyer that I left called me back. He said, I haven't hired anybody because I was hoping you wouldn't like that job. Can you come back? So I said, yes. So I quit and I came, went back. But I still felt there was something more. There was something more 
that I wanted my job to be more than just filing, you know, answering insurance claims. So um, one of the top trial lawyers in San Diego in uh, uh, legal malpractice and uh, car injuries, injury cases, uh, had an opening and I went there and I thought, oh my God, this would be a dream job. And I thought about it, I prayed about it. And sure enough, I got a call and the attorney said, I've selected you. And the other girl that was the runner up, he told her about the job I was leaving. So she went over there, got that job and I got the job. And that was the last uh, full-time job. I worked there for over 10 years and it was everything. I mean, it was it was helping the helping the patient. It was taking uh, one of our patients, one of our clients, to a doctor's appointment because he needed to follow up from an injury. It was really working like, oh, I forget the name of it. There was a series where the Della Street, where she was Perry Mason's assistant. It was that, and I just loved it. So that's, uh, I guess, what I would like to say about having patients knowing what you want and keeping your eye on the ball and knowing that that will come true if if you hold on to that. So uh, how about you, Kathy? You want to comment on that? I would. I, I find it very interesting that the secret ingredient in life is patience. And it seems to be how much in our life that we struggle if we only had a little bit of patience and uh, it would just unfold so much. And I, I can think of the times in my life that I just wanted it right now. I wanted an answer now. I wanted something to happen right now. And and sometimes I force the outcome and then only to regret that if I had only been patient, something better was waiting for me around the corner. And I, um, I can so often think of it. And as I've gotten older, I've just learned to say, you know, allow this to unfold the way it's supposed to unfold and, and be patient with the, you know, things knowing and just always affirming that that which is for my highest good will come to me and I don't have to force things to be or, you know, and like in this gentleman's situation in that article where he was cheated out of money and went to an attorney and, and for an attorney to say, you know, just wait it out, so, you know, rather than going into, and it probably, you know, for the dollar amount, it's not worth the grief that you would go to. And sometimes it's like taking legal action isn't there, or, you know, just getting onto it and just going, okay, God, I put it in your hands. I, you know, it's, this is broken. So how can you fix it? I trust you to bring it to fruition, or I trust, you know, God to, to bring out the best in every situation. And, and to, um, you know, to really right the wrongs. I can't do those things, and and but I can, you know, pray and put it in that hands and be patient that, you know, that God is working behind the scenes. God is making the things come about. And especially during these troubling times when we see so much anger and resentment and there's just so many shootings and things that are happening, I just continue to pray you know god just please i put this in your hands i you know i know i know that this there is a better outcome for us and um i just I, and i trust in that so along with that is just learning that secret ingredient that the next time i i want to force something to happen and it's not happening i just trusting and i can give you an example in this this just happened to us us we leave on a trip and um, we're going to London and our flight coming back um, got changed. And when they changed our return flight from London back to San Diego, we are um, we picked Detroit as our stopping point because it was sort of halfway. We have nine hours from London to Detroit and then about five hours there. So it was going to give us a little bit of break, you know, rather than being on the flight for a long time. Well, they changed it. That flight that we had from Detroit to San Diego was canceled. So they put us on another flight that was five and a half hours later. And it was like, okay, there's no way I want to sit in an airport for five and a half hours after I've just done a nine hour flight. Then by the time we get on that plane and get to San Diego, 
we'll get to San Diego 24 hours after we have just checked out of our hotel and have been traveling. And it was like, okay, we need to, we need to see if we can't get on an earlier flight. And there was one similar in time to what our original was, but it's a little bit earlier. And so there, we had a two hour layover and this was cutting it down to like a little less than an hour and a half to change planes, go through customs and immigration. And so that's why they put us on the one five hours later because the probability of us making it. Well, I we talked about it. We called called the airline and said, why did you do that? And she said, well, it was probably not enough time. And we're going, well, what can you do for us? Because then we thought, well, maybe, you know, we were going to be on a nonstop, but maybe there's one leaving right around that time that we're going to make a connection, but still get us in a little earlier. And we're not sitting in an airport for hours. And um, so she said, well, you know, I, I can put you on that flight. And, um, you know, it's just, it, you should be able to do it. We're going to be running from <laughs> one place to the other, to the other. And by the time we get on it. So um, she made the change for us as we asked, we we said, so now I'm trusting the fact that that will unfold. Well, then, then I slept on it and said, okay, what's going to happen now? Maybe we won't make that flight. So I called them back and said, okay, I'm not sure about this, you know, time change and, you know, how far are everything spread apart in this airport? And uh, she said, well, it's not, that airport is not that big of an airport. So you're not going all over. And I said, so give me give me the answer is that if we can't make this flight, then can we hop on that flight that's later? And she said, yeah, there's openings on that plane. It's not full and you probably would be able to get it. So we we went with the change going. I'd rather try to catch that earlier flight than sit around for five hours, but I'm going to have to be patient and trust that it's going to work. But I got a plan B that if we miss that one, there is another plan to a uh, plane to get on. So, um, we're just going to trust that it works out for the best and have that patience that this put it in God's hand that, you know, we will we'll make our connection. Our one flight will get in earlier and we'll just make everything that needs to unfold. So I trust in that. And so it was sort of like learning to be able to believe and have that patience and that in secret ingredient. And I think along with that is the trust is putting patience and trust together. So. So thank you um, for bringing this to us and sharing these this interesting topic. And um, does anybody have any el anything else they want to add to this? Okay, if not, I will pray us out. So take this moment and let's be grateful that we had this time to share, to open our hearts to each other and, and to you, the, our viewing uh, audience, that you know, you are getting enlightened by some of the things that we share, some of the instances in our life that have taught us to be patient and and trusting. And we know that God is working through us all the time and is in our presence and wants the best for us. We thank you for this and this blessings, these times, and for the people in our lives who teach us how to be patient. And we know we are growing with each and every day in thy glory and thy presence forever and ever. Amen. So I want to thank everyone. I want to thank Reverend Linda and Kathy for joining us on the panel today. Um, if you liked what we talked about, please, you know, make your comments. Let us know if there's anything else that you want to share. Uh, we would love to have you join our panel and add your inspiration to our discussion and um, and just basically and subscribe. Please subscribe to our um, cast and share this with others. Pass this on. If this, if this topic touched you, maybe you can share it with a friend and let them know. So until we meet up again, we wish you the best and want to say goodbye. So take care, everyone. Thank you for joining us and let's stay connected and grow in spirit. We are on Facebook, search for Unity Church of El Cajon, and follow us and like our posts. You can reach us on YouTube at Unity Church of El Cajon. Please subscribe to our channel, watch our videos, and leave comments. 
which can help us improve. We are on the web at unityofelcajon.org. Email or call our church office to receive our weekly newsletters, which lists all of our activities and opportunities to learn and grow together.